As a lifeguard, Ahmad Hasim is dedicated to helping swimmers in distress. But he also knows exactly how it feels to be quite literally in the jaws of death. Let's get the full story. A Cape Townian born and bred, Ahmad Hasim grew up feeling at home in the ocean, despite the traumatic encounter that he experienced just off the shore. When Karishma decided to find out what drives Ahmad as an athlete and an environmental advocate, she knew where to find him. Fear can either make you face everything and run or face everything and rise. The latter was the choice of shark attack victim Ahmad Asim. He has risen from the depths to become a Paralympic champion and has been flying the flag high for South Africans and Paralympics all around the world. Today he's training for the 2016 Paralympic Games, so I'm going to be his cheerleader as we catch up. In 2006, Ahmad was participating in a routine surf life-saving exercise off Musenberg Beach when an encounter with a great white shark resulted in him losing the lower half of his right leg. Despite the severity of his injuries, Ahmad made an astonishing recovery and was given the nickname of Shark Boy. Now, as a Paralympian swimmer, he maintains a grueling training routine. Hi, Ahmad. How are you? Good, thanks. You? What drives you? What motivates you to get in that pool and train as hard as you do? In London 2012 at the Paralympic Games, I came third for the men's 100 meter butterfly. And uh, I was so close to coming first and as well as grabbing that world record. So something I want to do is obviously just get that qualifying time as well as turn that bronze medal into a gold medal and uh, hopefully coming home to South Africa with a new world record. I know you've got lots of work to do so I'll let you get to it and I'm going to be your cheerleader on the sidelines today. Okay, cool. Alright, cheers. Swimmers who compete in the Paralympics are classified according to the events in which they participate and the degree of their physical disability. Ahmad has been placed in the S10 category for freestyle, backstroke and butterfly swimmers. And currently, he holds the African S10 record for the 100 meters butterfly. Of course, his speed and stamina have a lot to do with the amount of time this 1.94 meter tall athlete spends in the pool and gym. He has even joked that he improves his performance in the water by imagining that there's a shark snapping at his heels. I think I'm going to have a bit of neck strain after <laughs> my interview today. Well, what's quite, what's quite strange is that at the normal competition, I'd probably be average height because uh, we're looking at both men and women being about my height. So, How have you had to up your game when it comes to training for the Paralympics? Well, what people tend to uh, not realize is that the Paralympics is just as tough as the Olympic Games. To be honest, I would actually see us training a bit harder than what Olympians do because we've got to train with our disabilities as well. Obviously, for me, being a butterfly, uh, you know, I kind of tend to work my upper body a lot. And my trainer kind of really pushes me really hard um, to try and perfect that so that when I get to the Paralympic Games or World Championships, I'm sort of like a force to be reckoned with when it comes to using my upper body. What have been some of your highlights thus far? Definitely donning the green and gold. Every time I put on that jacket, it makes me feel so proud to be South African. But I would have to say the highlight of my career is obviously going to London in 2012 and uh, bringing a medal back to South Africa for the men's 100 meter butterfly. Ahmad's achievement in London was testimony to his determination after not reaching the finals at his first Paralympics in China. Mental preparation is essential and beach walks are part of the process. Ahmed, thank you so much for bringing me to Musenberg Beach. Where did your love for the ocean begin? My dad's a fisherman, so um, most of the time after school, uh, we used to come to the beach and uh, I just used to watch him fish all the time. And that's how I kind of grew a respect and love for the ocean, uh, just being by its side most of the time. This is where most of my time was spent on the weekends. Can you tell me what happened? It was August the 13th, 2006. Basically on that day we were doing what's called multiple patient rescues. My brother and myself and my friend of mine were going to act as patients. And uh, when the scenario happened, they launched the rescue boat into the water. They picked my friend up. They were on their way to pick myself up when something caught the corner of my eye coming from Musenberg Mountain. And as I looked at it, that's when I saw a 4.7 meter great white shark heading towards my brother. I remember screaming at the lifeguards. I told them, you know, get my brother out of the water, get him out of the water. At that point, it was just me and the shark in the water. Can you describe the exact moment when you lost your leg? As that shark kind of lunged for me, um, the next thing I know, I kind of leaned into the shark's head to actually take my right leg and throw it on top of its body because all I could think about was to actually get on its back and stay away from the jaws. At that point, my right leg didn't want to come forward and I couldn't understand why this leg was not coming forward. 
And as I turned around to see what had happened, that's when I saw that half my leg was in the shark's mouth already. Immediately at that point, I think the lifeguards kind of caught a, a glimpse of what was actually happening. An absolute terror hit the skies. There was screaming, it was just chaos. I got dragged underneath the water and uh, got pulled towards the depths of the ocean. And the worst thing at that point was listening to the sound of the rescue boat's engine disappearing in the background as I got dragged underneath. So what I did was I fought back as much as I could, hitting the shark on the side of its head with my hands and eventually kicking with my leg. The shark just shook me again underneath the water and that's when my leg actually broke in half. And I immediately swam for the surface where I took my left hand, flung it out of the water and was just hoping that the lifeguards would catch a glimpse. Immediately at that point I could hear the sound of the rescue boat's engine coming towards me and my brother leaning over looking at me with his one hand down and just screaming, I've got you. What inspired you to get back into the water? Growing up with a very positive family, my mom and my dad always you know, kind of pushed us um, into leadership roles where we either take ownership of what we do or we become leaders of what we're busy in. I thought to myself, you know what, this thing happened to me, but we got to grab the bull by the horns and just go back to it and try and get over it as fast as possible. So just a week out of, out of being in the hospital, I was right on these beaches again, walking the shoreline. You have such a positive outlook on life. How do you hold on to that sense of positivity? Well, I believe that attitude is one of the most important things you can be blessed with. And uh, it depends on how you want to use that attitude. I believe that if you have a positive outlook on life, you'll get positive results all the time. Having said that, I'm sure you've had to face numerous challenges. It's not being an easy ride, to be honest, especially being a professional athlete. You know, it's, the road is never easy, no matter who you are as an athlete. And uh, we have our struggles. We go through life as, as people would. Um, and I mean, my biggest problem that I had to go through was just accepting life the way it was after my shark attack. Now, I really do love sharks, but I'm not so sure how I would feel about them after an attack. What are your takes on sharks these days? In 2010, I was called upon um, the UN um, to be part of a group called the Shark Attack Survivors for Shark Protection Campaign. It's a bunch of shark attack survivors that have come together to basically just talk about the protection of sharks and how we can, you know, protect our sharks of the world. And uh, obviously, being a shark attack survivor, who better to speak for sharks than a shark attack survivor? What about the ocean? How do you feel about it? Do you still love it as much? I absolutely love the ocean. My weekends, I still come and spend with my brother at the ocean. We go out, we catch a surf, and we just enjoy ourselves. You know, we kind of just put fear aside and just live every last day to the fullest we can. I understand you're a motivational speaker. What message do you hope to spread to the world? You know, I had a 4.7 meter great white shark standing in, in, in my way as an obstacle. But you know what? Today, I'm representing South Africa at the national and international level. And it's all I wanted to do as a child. And my goals are achieved. So don't let anything stand in your way and just push through and then achieve what you need to achieve. Hey, how's it? Hey, what's up? Karishma, this is my brother, Tarek. Hi, Tarek. Lovely to meet you. So this is the one I've been talking about all the time. Tarek, how do you feel about the events that unfolded on that day? I'm very grateful of what happened on that day because obviously he was there to save me and then I'm standing here today alive. Do you think that day has brought you and your brother closer together? Yeah, definitely the experience that brought us closer. So because now we train together, we obviously, I'm helping him go to wherever, whatever Paralympics and then he's always there pushing me for life saving. So always sticking together as well. When we were younger as well, we've always been together, done everything together, um, even living in the same room together. Well, I mean, like, if you look at the situation, I'm so glad the way things turned out because anything could have gone wrong in that day. And uh, I mean, I'm nothing without this guy, so yeah. Not even a great white shark could stop this man from achieving his dreams. Impossible certainly is nothing for Ahmed Hasim. I have no doubt that South Africa will be behind his Olympic dreams and I'm certain that the entire Mela team will be cheering him on.